Okay, this is part two of our composite saucer poster project. Before we leave Animator, though, one thing we should do is hit File and Save. Let's protect our work and make sure it's going to be there the next time we want to come and find it. I'm going to close or minimize Animator. I don't think we're going to need it again for a little while. And now it's time to open up those files that we had created in the last part. First thing is the cropped image. Let's bring that into to, uh, Photoshop. And I'm using Photoshop Elements 8. and the merged picture, I think it was this one, I want to bring it in as well. So I have two photos that are pretty much identical, except one has a saucer and one doesn't. So this is the way we're going to make this work now. I would like to start with the background being the uh, empty picture, and I want to move the pixels from the composite in like this and get it to match up perfectly, which it should do, because again, if we've set everything up properly, they should be identical. I can minimize this. You can turn on and off the eyeball just to make sure this is working properly. So background is the original, layer one is the composite. The reason we want to merge things like this is we want to be able to steal elements from the background and put it on top of the composite. As an example, zoom in on your subject and depending on the kind of picture you have, hopefully you can make this happen really easily. I'm going to use the quick select tool and I want to select a chunk of the arm and the subject the part of the subject that's going to be in front of the saucer, which would include torso and all that sort of stuff. So here I go. And hopefully it'll work easily enough. This is a great tool for quickly bashing this stuff out. If you get more than you need on this, you can undo that by holding down the Alt key and painting the stuff you don't need to select. And of course you can zoom way in there to fine tune it. If the brush is too big or too small, you can use the square brackets on your keyboard to make them bigger or smaller. Oops, I did that wrong. Control Z. Don't do it all at once. If you let go every now and again, you can use Control Z to back up a step. And as I do this, I'm just clicking a single time to make sure I don't go too far. Hopefully, I'm going to catch what I need here. Just sort of clicking on the parts outside as though, as though this was a paintbrush. It does a pretty good job. So it looks like that's pretty much going to get it what I need. I'll add a little more there and there, but I don't think it's going to have a big effect. I'll double click the um, hand tool to see the whole picture again. So there's the chunk of background that I need. I'm going to use Control J to put that chunk in its own layer, layer two. And I can drag it above the composite. So when I turn this thing back on, it looks like the saucer is now behind instead of in front, just because I've put that little fix in front of it. And you can zoom in there and check it out and see if that's doing the job for you. Looks like it's okay. Now there's more that you can do and try to feather these things. Like there's a little problem with the arm there. Okay, on that layer, I'm going to call this fix or a patch or something. You can use the eraser tool. Go in there and if you have too much covering over that fix and it's covering over things over, you can refine it. Now that's a really hard edged brush that I'm using with this. So you can go with something that's a little bit softer. Choose a brush that's a nice feathered brush like this. And it'll make things sort of fade a little bit. If you do this just right, you can get a pretty convincing blend. You get the idea. All right, I'm going to step back here now and see what else. And by the way, if you make a mistake and you cut out too much, that's great. Just go back and do the whole thing again. The next thing that I might want to do with this is I might want to toss a shadow underneath the arm to make it look like it's really resting, practically resting on it. So I'm going to zoom back in on this. Once you've cleaned up the arm, it works best. I'm going to go to the layers. I'm going to add a new layer for the arm shadow. In fact, I'll call it arm shadow. And to get a, a shape that is the shape of that arm, I'm going to go to the move tool first. I am going to control click the icon for the fix layer. And that selects just the shape of the arm that I had quick selected before. Sort of redoes the quick select really quickly. But I'm going to take it to the arm shadow layer. And I would like to get a nice black color. So I'm going to click the little default colors here. And I'm going to paint arm shadow layer with that black very easily. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and tap Delete once. And I get a shadow right there in the arm shadow layer. It's black. I'm going to deselect. Control D will deselect. And now I can move the arm shadow layer by... Whoops, no, undo that. Be careful what you click on. If you click on anything that can be floating around here, like layer 1, it'll click on this. So I'm going to tap the arrow keys instead. Holding Shift arrow keys moves it really quickly. And I've got myself a shadow that kind of works like this. Now, it doesn't look very shadow-like because 
planes don't match and it's really solid. So in the arm shadow layer, first off, I'm going to take it down to about 50%. Let's assume a shadow is about 50% dark. Next, with the move tool, you can actually crush the shapes of these things a little bit. And if this was really a flat shadow, it might be really severely flattened like this. So I'm just making it flatter and flatter till I can see almost the whole thing. Kind of like this, it changes the angle too, that sort of matches a little bit better. Just a little bit like that. So I think, you know what, I think I'm going to be happy with this. I'm going to just sort of leave it like that. Now once again, we got a little problem here in that we, um, we have shadows where we don't want them. So great, eraser tool, you can erase that shadow. Just the parts you don't want to keep. Nice. Now, likewise, there's something down here that doesn't look very realistic, so I'm going to erase that part of the shadow, too. And I'm going to step back a little bit and see how that's showing up. If you have any other parts of the shadow, I'll zoom in on it a little bit here, you may even want to take something bigger like a rectangle tool and say, you know what, I don't need any shadow floating here, so I'm going to delete it with the rectangle. Remember, I'm on the arm shadow layer as I'm doing this. So I've got a shadow that's looking pretty accurate. Still think I can make it look a little bit better if I was to blur it a little bit, though. So with the arm shadow layer selected, I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and just adding a realistic amount of blur to it is going to make it look like that arm is actually right there. And you don't want that blur to cover over this stuff here, so just, you know, look carefully. See if there's anything else that needs to be erased. And that'll get the job done for you. Anything up at the top? Nah, it's pretty good. Okay, good. So speaking of shadows, now we got a nice, uh, a nice depth cue that's sort of showing us where this thing is. This thing should be casting a shadow likewise on this bench. So I'm going to add another shadow layer to this. This will be the saucer shadow. Now, yours could be very, very different. It's completely up to how you took the picture with the back, where things are, but this is how you can use Photoshop to fake these things out. I'm going to make a shadow that sort of looks like this. I think it's going to kind of occupy that area. And so I'll put in another shadow there. Again, Alt, Delete was the way I started. I'm going to have it sort of on the, just the table part, I think. Uh, take that opacity down, and I'm guessing at around 50%. Ought to do the job. Now, I've got some real straight edges with this. If you want to use a better tool for straight edges, try clicking on the lasso tool and look for the polygonal lasso tool. And you can actually click a point along an edge of a table. And I could say, you know what? I want to have the shadow not cover certain parts of it here. You know, all this other stuff is okay, but I don't want the shadow floating out in space. So I'm just going to select around this area and I'm going to hit delete. And this way, the shadow will not occur where it shouldn't over, the, over this part. Control D. I should have done this part first. I'm going to do that blur again. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Because the shadow is not going to be really hard-edged like this. It should be probably a whole lot softer. Round table like that. Say OK. All these things contribute to the depth cues that start to make this thing look more and more convincing, like the things really in the room with you. So I challenge you. See if you can use your Photoshop skills. Use layers. Remember the selections and things, and see if you can make this into a convincing poster. And once you get it all done, once you're happy with the artwork that you've done with it, and you think you've got a good sale to it, great file, save it as a PSD, Photoshop document, just in case you want to come back to it again. I'm going to call this version 2, I think. And if you're absolutely con con convinced that you've got something that's worth printing, that you're done, you can use a save for web. And you can save it as a JPEG. Again, this is really high high in resolution. It's a super high-res picture. So I'm going to save this in a quality... I'll save this one in quality 90. It doesn't have to be that big. It's 3400 by 2200. Say OK. And this is the final poster. So I'm going to call this Steampunk Saucer Poster. I'm calling this version 2. Save it. So you got the PSD. you got the JPEG. Hand in the JPEG and you're cooking. Good luck. See what you can do.